Welcome to Certain Point of View, your first step into a much nerdier world. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Thanks. And now your hosts, Ben Milton and Addie Thomas. Hey, Nerf Herders, I'm Addie Thomas. And I am Ben Milton. Oh, you're Ben Milton? I am today. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another episode of Certain Point of View. Today we are talking about The Defenders on Netflix, the culmination of the Marvel Netflix universe with Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. Uh, long awaited. It's been, oh man, I don't, was that announced 2013 or something like that? It's been I a don't while. Know. It's been a while. It's been a while. And I remember the moment they, they announced that, that like, I, I didn't lose excitement necessarily for the movies, but the Marvel Netflix expectation was definitely uh, like a whole new level of excitement for me. And in a lot of ways, most of those series have been uh, a great, pay, have been well-earned, great payoff, and some of the best TV I think I've watched, to be perfectly honest. Before we get to that, though, don't forget, you can uh, follow us on all so sorts of social media. Just go to our website, certainpov.com. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, make sure you, you can do it through iTunes. You can do it through Google Play. You can do it through your favorite podcast app. All of that information is on our website, certainpov.com. Just click on connect. All right, Defenders, what are your sort of initial thoughts, Ben? Eight episodes was perfect. Yeah. They nailed it. Yeah. not There was no wasted time. There was no like, well, that didn't really need to happen. It, it not that not that it was just like constant balls to the wall action nonstop, and there was no moments for the show to breathe or have any decent character moments. But it was the perfect amount of space to tell the story that they had. Yeah, and I'd like to see the other Netflix shows go to that eight episode format. I think even like I love Daredevil season one, but there's one episode that, yeah, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm mixed feelings about that. There was only one episode I felt could have been removed out of yeah. the picture, and yeah. then it would have been even tighter. Well, I, I, I but, don't think that you need to like narrow it down to a specific number, but make the make sure your make, story that you're telling is effective and, and not, fits. Yeah, yeah, and if you only need nine sto nine episodes to tell that story, use nine episodes. If you need fifteen, use all fifteen effectively, but keep it tight, keep it moving, keep it you know forward. Always <laughs> thanks, thanks, Luke. <laughs> or thanks, Pops. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally dug it. I I mean, there's a whole lot of issues we kind of, kind of have to sort through with sort of how to process this particular show because, because we have certain expectations from not just four seasons of different characters, but actually five seasons, just because the success of these these stories for the most part for four out of those five <laughs> have been phenomenal and been highly praised. So... So we've gotten some interesting things to work with. There are definitely things that I would have liked to – a couple things I would have changed. My sort of initial thoughts, I I love it. I am not crazy about the ending for a couple key dramatic reasons that are just part of knowing that you have future series with some of these characters. And I'm just going to tell you right now, like, I guess this, this is the best spoilers. we can go without spoilers. So – from here on out, it's nothing but spoilers. Spoilers! Uh, but, uh, and again, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. All right. If you're here still, there's something wrong with you. Um, but uh, I was not crazy about their sort of fake me out ending with Daredevil. Like, that he, like, you kind of believe he's dead, or at least the other characters believe he's dead. And then, I like, in some ways, I'm happy that they already showed him alive because you know that he's still going to be alive rather than trying to pull that and make us really think that he's not when you Glenn. don't. Glenn. Yeah, well, we know there's going to be a Daredevil season three. There's not going to be Daredevil season three without Daredevil. And there was plenty of stuff that you still have to do with this character because we know the Kingpin has to come back at some point. Like they've already, like they've already set that up. Now, to be fair, it would like it would be ballsy of them to just say, "Hey." We knocked out this character. We've told the story that we feel we've told with him, and we'll let the Kingpin take on the other three characters and anyone else we may want to bring along. I would be all for that if they were to commit to it. But it it's not as bad as, as this comparison I'm, I'm about to make, but it is sort of my big flaw. The, 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 the one flaw 
that is irredeemable for Dark Knight Rises for me is the fake me out ending, the fake me out death. I like I, that just it doesn't it's it's bad. Like it if 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 I'm, I'm like you have to like you have to do enough to earn that character's return from a death. Even if you do it within the same movie, like you have you have to let a significant amount of time pass with you processing that death, feeling it and also having the return already earned and be shocking in some way. But if you already know that he's going to be back, it's not really a shock. Like, like I watched that death, death scene, and I knew, like, I, I totally expect Madame Gao to be alive, Electra to be alive, and Matt to be alive. I, like, I have no real expectation. I never really expected them to be dead. Well, what, well, what were your, th what was sort of your thought on that issue? My, my thought on that and, and, issue is... When, hold, let me just say this thing. I still love the series. Yeah. I still ultimately like a lot of what they did with this series. You have this need for your heroes to die. I <laughs> see that's the thing. I would have been fine if they all got out okay. I honestly, like there were costs to they could have figured out other costs to the, to to them emotionally to like uh, Misty lost an arm, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I guess, um, but it feels like a fake me out gravitas to sort of like give like, hey, a character died, but they didn't really. Right. I, I get it. I don't disagree with you. But then again, like I also recognize it's a comic book show. Like nobody ever dies. And resurrection has already been introduced into this series, so it's it's not the it's not the most unforgivable of my my I I, I understand your point. I I don't disagree with you. I think that I have like it raised a lot of questions for me, and I remember looking over at you and going, "Who the hell are they? Like how who are these nuns and who are they going? They're going to get who? Yeah. So they're like, going. To, you want me to? Explain they're going to get his mom. Yeah. So Maggie. Uh, who is uh, Daredevil's mom? It's in the Born Again story arc. Um, it's I think one of I don't I, I. So do you do you not think that that's not a cool way to introduce the 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 the, the, the fans into Hey, this is the story that we're going to tell next. It, yeah. Yes. Uh, absolutely. So yeah, I am I'm cool with that aspect of them bringing her, him back. Like he's in the convent. I don't know how long they're going to stretch, like, will he not remember who he is type of deal? Like, how did he survive? Is it going to be, like, somehow, like, a piece of the, the dragon fell in his mouth and all of a sudden he's like, oh, I'm a, I, I was able to get one res from that, you know, from that little bit of dragon bone or whatever, you know. Uh, I, like, I don't, I'm okay with whatever details they come up with to whatever hoops they jump through to do that, but it just felt emotionally false to me. Because I knew as I was watching that that he wasn't dead. Because hmm. even even with comic book storytelling, it if you know the character is gonna that because to me that is one of the flaws of a lot of comic book storytelling is knowing a character is gonna die but that you know they're gonna come back. Sometimes it's handled well. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes they let you go for a good amount of time, and they find an interesting way to bring him back. In a way that works within the lore and all of that. And that I am fine with. Like, character resurrections were no stranger with in comics, you know. And that's outside of even DC and Marvel, for that matter. Um, that's, just, that's just in a lot of storytelling, to be perfectly honest. So, so in, in your essence, so I, I, just correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to understand what, what your point is. It didn't feel earned. I, I, that's such a vague statement to me. Yeah. You, I hear that a lot, and I don't really understand what that means sure. a lot of times. Are, are you saying, like, you wanted more time to go by before they revealed that he was dead? Like, you didn't want to, like, he dies 10 minutes later at the end of the episode, we find out he's alive. If they had waited to another season of another show, like they do Jessica Jones season two, and somewhere in there, somehow we find out yeah. that Matt is alive. Yeah, I'd like a little bit of doubt to, like, say, let's let's not even announce... Like, so here's one thing that, that's sort of like an, an interesting vein. Like, th and this is one thing that – so so they've already – Kevin Feige has already said that Avengers 4, they can't announce the title for it because it is a spoiler. And that's – like, honestly, that makes my – like, that makes me excited because, like, what on earth is the, the title of this freaking movie that's a spoiler to whatever happens in Avengers 3, right? 
it'd be uh, in the same sort of vein of like that anticipation and like the doubts. If 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 they just said right now, you know what, we don't have plans to do Daredevil season three, and it's I know it's a very tough thing to do, but they pulled off a uh, what 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 was what's the the monster movie the the shaky cam. Monster. Cloverfield. Yeah, Cloverfield. There was sort of there was that other sequel to Cloverfield, Cloverfield. and they hid totally that they did that movie, and like it was just when they started like it, what was it like a month out from trailer uh, trailers they were able to do that, and they were able to do something like that. That like it is po- it's still possible. It's tough to do. <sighs> okay, so de- devil's devil's advocate here. Yeah. Okay, and I'm not. I I, I kind of understand what you're saying, but I. Daredevil is by far the star of your Netflix yeah world. Yes. When you say we're killing off Charlie Cox and Daredevil, you run the risk of losing a lot of fans yeah. and a lot of money. And then you, but I think you got to pick a different character then. But at the same but on the on the flip side of that, it was also the appropriate story to tell for Elektra and him. Here's the other thing yeah, that also they wrapped that story up well. Well, do you think Elektra's dead? Who cares? I think they ended that story. Yeah. So this is another thing that that relationship. No, the relationship worked. I don't know. Uh, this is my, it, was it was the only way that re- they said it in the back that this was the only way that it had to end this way. Yeah, it had to end with them fighting and it killing both of them. That's true, and, and that to. that was the appropriate. That is definitely the appropriate end to that. Like I'm totally fine with that because it's his true love and all of that. So and that like that that the substance of that story is fine. <laughs> by by that, you just wanted a couple episodes of somewhere else before we find out that he's he's alive. alive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that, okay. That's, that's my big thing. It, it's it's a it's a reasonable complaint. I, I don't. I, there's no way you're ever going to get that. The no. same way you're never going to get a Batman movie where Batman dies. Well, but okay. So let me ask you this: Like, do you remember when they faked a, faked out um, uh, Stephen Amell? What's the Arrow mm-hmm. with the Raza Ghoul season and like season season uh, mid season finale? Like Raza Ghoul totally kills uh, Arrow and he falls off the cliff and you're like, oh yeah, he's he's going to be dead. They're going to have to jump through some loops. We know he's going to be back, but like you were hoping. And they were talking it up like, oh, there's going to be a while where he's gone. But it was the end of the first episode back where they were already like, oh, and yeah, he's, he's alive, guys. <laughs> and like there's a little bit of disappointment in that. For sure. Because they teased – to me, the, the difference Th- is, that, is that they teased that he was going to be gone for a long time. That's true. And we're going to see and, the yeah, Arrow crew real. What are they going to do without him? And, and you know, do you think they lasted an episode and a half? Do you think they didn't do that with the way they? So and this is one thing I liked about it. Like I liked the idea of Iron Fist saying, "All right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take up what Daredevil was doing. I'm gonna fill the role he was, he was doing in in the night." Like I thought that was a cool character moment for him. Like that was a great for the consequence of what that meant for the other characters. It was amazing. Like Jessica Jones deciding, "All right, I'm gonna be this this investigator who does help." people in need i'm not gonna just wallow in in my own guilt luke has a greater perspective on who he is supposed to be it's not just not just about harlem but more than harlem and and the symbol of what what he does and for iron fist it's a very direct like what is the home that i'm I'm, i I have to protect it's like is it kudlun or is it new york right now it is new york so i like what they did with that to the other characters in a lot of ways so I can't, I can't, I, I need, like, I should stop complaining about it. Cause it's it, a very minor complaint. Yeah. In my opinion. It I, is. It, it's a complaint for sure. It's a very minor complaint. I don't have that complaint. I, yeah. I thought it was fine. Yeah. Um, I was surprised by it cause I wasn't expecting it. Like I kind I kind of thought they would leave it alone for a while. And cause we know we're getting Punisher soon. Yeah. I thought maybe we would get an answer for what happened to him yeah. in Punisher or something like that. But to have it like, you know, at the end of that episode, at the end of the series, I, I thought was fine. I yeah. thought it was good, you know, just from a logistics. Scene, I guess I'm just being like super practical right now. not fanboy enough yeah. <laughs> of just like, of course, like you're not going to let Charlie, like you're not going to let 
a casual viewer think Charlie Cox's character is dead and that you're never going right. to see Daredevil again. Right. Like you just you're just not going to do that. There's too much money involved. Yeah. Like I, I I get it. So I never really had that expectation. So when it happened, I was just like, oh cool. What story are they telling? I yeah. don't know this story. So I'm excited yeah. to see what that story is. I'm excited to see where that goes. I completely agree with you on his death having the impact that was necessary for the rest of those characters to actually become something. Particularly Iron Fist, who is repeatedly shit upon <laughs> appropriately by his fellow defenders <laughs> in this ep- in this entire season. So, so He's awful. This is a perfect lead in because so what do you think of of now of Iron Fist? He's awful. Season? He is by the show's estimation, by their direct <laughs> okay. quote, the worst Iron Fist ever. Okay, so narratively, yes. And that narratively that was also true in 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 uh his own solo series yep. too. Yep. Well, so let, like let's move like that's the story aspect absolutely but that's the they, act, they leaned into it I, think, I like that I they think, leaned into I th- it I think they had to after that season I don't think that was necessarily their intention yeah I think that they you know, they heard the backlash they heard the criticism they looked at it and then they went it does kind of suck we need to just kind of like it is what it is let's lean into it and let's start to give him reasons to become more of a badass I think it was a combination of that but I think that is also in some ways Iron Fist character so if you read Immortal Iron Fist there's a lot of stuff where he is supposed to be the greatest Iron Fist but he is not actualized as that yet there are stories of much greater accomplishments from other Iron Fists and he has very much he lives in the shadow of the legacy of of who he is so I didn't I didn't have quite as much of an issue with that here as I did with his solo series. His solo series has a lot of issues. One because it's seventy percent boardroom and thirty percent like mysticism and kung fu when that needs to be flipped. Like you can't like I don't think you should take out the boardroom part of it either. No, I this think billionaire playboy part of his personality yeah. is, is integral to it. And yeah. honestly, if you were expecting a story about the Meachams, that was a great season of TV. <laughs> <laughs> if you love the Meachums, you'll love Iron Fist. Right? <laughs> Not sure why they're in it, but here it is. No, I I, I agree. Uh, it was a good story. Just I, I felt it needed to be flipped, and it, they needed to really embrace the kung fu and the mysticism and all of that kind of stuff. So, what did you think though? Like, so what are your thoughts sort of on Finn Jones and the character and how he fits into into the in the bigger picture? Do you think he still sucks? I still think he's. Lou- he's, he's lousy at fighting. He doesn't look like he knows how to fight. Yeah. Uh, for somebody who, even if he is the lamest Iron Fist of all time, he should still be competent enough. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I don't know what just happened there. Hello, test one, two, three, four. Okay, we got it. It's okay, just, we're back. It's just in. a delayed okay. reaction. That happens all the time in audition. That happened in even in GTS, and it was always fine. Okay, so you just want to mark that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, I think as far as he goes, like he, he does again. He doesn't look like he knows how to throw a punch. His best fight scenes in this was when he was wearing a hoodie, so that you could put a stunt guy. Okay. In, in 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 his place yeah. to, to to do it. And look, let's let's be perfectly yeah. honest. Charlie Cox benefits from this because he's wearing that suit. Yeah. You can put a stunt guy in that suit, and all of a sudden he looks like he's an amazing fighter. Right. Right. Like Charlie Cox gets that benefit. Watching this series, all the three of the three of them who weren't masked, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and and Iron Fist, all look like they can't fight. Well, I expect that out of Jessica Jones because she's not a brawler. Like she's. Luke Cage? She, I expect him to be able to fight because he was a cop. He should at least know how to throw a punch. And he looks okay. Yeah, he doesn't I, look bad. Okay. It looked okay. It, it yeah. was definitely an improvement over yeah. what we've seen out yeah, of Finn see, Jones. I, I for saw, sure. I saw. I think they worked really hard on some editing and some, yeah. and, you know, and, see, and camera is, work and stuff like there that. Was, there was a help. lot. Yeah, sorry. No, there, there, was, there was a lot of bad editing in season one combined with bad like just bad choreography yeah. period. Yep. Definitely no, no prep time. I definitely still felt like sort of that rush of like hey, we need to produce this and the 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 fighting still could have been better. Um I but I'm also like starting to feel like okay, how much of this is also this is the tone for Marvel Netflix. And But how many fights were we watching when we sat down and we we binged it together on Friday? Yeah. Where 
like you know you're having the big action sequences and daredevil is just going nuts he he's is, having these amazing fights yeah and then you know you got you got finn jones getting knocked down <laughs> <laughs> you know and it's like you're the immortal iron fist like I think you're overselling the what the Iron Fist is. I assume that it has something to do with knowing how to use martial arts. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, but he's not. Remember, if all he's relying on is being able to summon his chi and punch his way out of it, he does it far too infrequently. Yeah. Or he needs to be a better fighter, that, yeah, see, so that he can so that he can bridge those gaps. See, that's a tough thing because he's also a character who lives in a world like typically on New York. So he he is he is easily a very he like if you just go by the description of the power set, both him and Luke Cage really should are so out of their element. Like they should be able to trash everybody they deal with. But you also have to have sort of the plot, like just like, like Spider Man has the same issue a lot of the time. Like Spidey Sense should get him out of just about everything. Right. Like he should not. Like nobody should really be able to land a punch right. against Ever. him. Yeah. So like there's a, th so I have I feel like there's some of that that I give them a little bit of that <sighs> that kind of like okay there's a a level a certain degree of that. That forgiveness for that for what your power set is that doesn't apply to season season his solo season one series. What what I do think though is because I was totally psyched in the board like I love that the the boardroom hallway fight in episode three to me that was my favorite fight where Luke Pie faces him and just <laughs> knocks him on his ass. <laughs> of course, because you don't you really hate him. <laughs> I, I don't. I want to really like this character. I, know. I really do want to like this character. I just don't think they've handled him. They they haven't handled yeah. him the same way that I would have handled him. And, and How about that? You're absolutely right. They they should have handled him better. So there so there is sort of a curve to what they've got to do. But if you're also saying like, "Hey, this is a guy who's really the, a really bad Iron Fist," what what would you do if that was what you were handed? If if Jeff Loeb told you you have to do, okay, so he could he should still be a competent martial artist. Okay, he should still be able to handily beat the hands goons, and yeah. you know, and then and then he should you know then he should struggle against the the bosses. So but he shouldn't he shouldn't have trouble. You know, beating up a couple thugs, okay? And here's yeah. and here's why: because being the worst Iron Fist to me is not being the worst martial artist. Yeah, it's being a sucker and being stupid and making the mistakes that he makes that fall into the hands plans. This is where I'm gonna have to 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 hold just kind of hold your criticism up to to the fire a little bit. So, arguably the the best scene we've had in all of these Marvel Netflix series is the hallway fight from Daredevil season one, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is the emotional impact of, like, you know, the kid that he's rescuing, mm -hmm. but it's also just the exhaustion mm -hmm. and just the brutality of, like... And this is a guy who, under some of the same exhaustion, has held his own with the hand. And mm -hmm. here he's dealing with just common Russian thugs. Mm -hmm. And yet, like, he's throwing microwaves at these guys. He's having to, like, catch his breath mm -hmm. in between punches. Mm -hmm. So... Like but that's... he also takes out 30 guys. <laughs> he take out 30 guys. How many guys were in that hallway fight? There was maybe like, like 10. There was a lot of guys he he had to punch out again and again. Okay. Iron Fist struggles with like one or two hand goons. He was held down by like six in, yes, the, board in, in the boardroom scene. Yes, yeah. but over like when you watch the fights, like a lot of the fights, yeah, he gets taken, like he's getting knocked down like all the damn time. Go back and watch yeah. the series again. He's getting knocked down all the time. That's true. It's you know, true. And, and, and yes, everybody takes their licks or whatever, but it, it like, I expect him, I expect him to, as the immortal Iron Fist. He's, he's trained, he's trained his whole life in Kunlun, this mystical city who's, yeah. who's devoted all this energy into training him into being this living weapon. Right. Is how he's described, right? Right. He should be better than the other three. And he's better than Jessica. <laughs> not, not by that much. And yeah. not by that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I, I just see that's, it as a consequence of equalizing them. Uh, yeah, I guess. So. Like I said, it's just it's a way yeah. of handling that character and that power set that I, I don't like. I don't agree with. I don't yeah. think it makes sense. It's not a knock on Finn Jones. He's acting his ass off. He's trying really hard. Yeah. 
and because what, what I, think, I will say I is sort of like I think they're just kind of retconning it into like well that that first season really didn't go the way we thought it would go yeah so we got to kind of like figure out how to make it work for him right so I think it's a combination of both retconning into uh, an abysmal first how season how do you beat a dragon. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know. I I agree with you. It is like the inconsistencies are really, really stunning. Bad. Yeah, but I also think that's an inconsistency you see across comics because Squirrel Girl beat Thanos. Squirrel Girl could beat anybody. <laughs> Squirrel Girl could beat anybody. She's the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Right. God damn you. <laughs> don't, don't don't try Timmy to use, Toe. Don't Her try. sidekick is named Timmy Toe, who took over after Monkey Joe died. <laughs> well, Monkey Joe gave it his all. <laughs> he all right. did. He did. Was a, was he died to save all of us. It was a gut wrenching episode. <laughs> Listen. All I'm saying is I, no, I, I, I love the series and like you yeah. know we, we just nitpicked you know yeah, for a half hour about Daredevil's death. Y- you're sort this of, is a nitpick. This is my nitpick on the show. Yeah, is, no, is, and I is and, Iron Fist and I, to- I and I position. totally get it. I totally sympathize with it. Here, I do think it's a combination of the retcon and the nature of the character being like yes, he is the worst Iron Fist. But I also think it's about the earnestness of the character. Like he is sort of like the Spider-Man of the group. He's the one who's not as jaded. You have some of those moments, but not enough for me. Really? You, yeah. you wanted more of those moments? Yeah, I think I yeah. did. I think I did want, like, I guess because we didn't get enough of it in season one. Yeah. If, like, some of them That's, felt a little yeah. out of place where you're like, this guy's kind of a noob. Like, yeah. where did that come from? Yeah. Like, so, I, yeah, I, it, it's, they really, they really fucked up that first season. Yeah. It's real, like, really where it all stems. And I think what they're do, working really hard to fix it. Yeah, and they gave and it to the right like guys. Because these are the guys who were the showrunners for Daredevil Season 2. And I, I have minor criticisms for Daredevil Season 2, but it was it's a great season. Mm-hmm. With, with that withstanding. Uh, I will say, sort of the my big positive for this series, other than a couple, couple of key action scenes. Like, I love, coming back to that season, like, Episode 3 boardroom fight scene. Like, seeing... Danny and Luke fight side by side together for the first time. I was fanboying out like you would not believe. Like, I got crazy excited seeing the, the two of them. Like when when Luke like just stands like and, and Danny hides behind him for the gunfire, yeah. and then they both start taking out guys together. And he's you know just tossing guys up against the ceiling. I mean that that's that's the kind of stuff I've been wanting. I have been so excited to see. Since they announced the series. Those two, yeah. So so that was a huge payoff for me. What I will say the strength of the series is really cool character arcs for every single one of these characters. Um, the way they used Stick was amazing. He mm-hmm. was an incredible character. Mm-hmm. They The way they used uh, certain members of sort of the, 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 the supporting. Uh, the B team. Yeah, the, the B team. The way they used Colleen Wing and Misty Knight were – very good. And also foggy to a lesser extent. Malcolm was sort of like just there in the mix. I was hoping they'd do more with Trish, uh, especially since she was also training to, to fight a little bit. Would have liked to see a little bit, but I'm fine with what they did because you all, like at a certain point, you can take away from. The yeah, and then you end up in episode 13. <laughs> exactly. You're like, did we really need did that we really Trish need the episode? Hellcat episode? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Was that important? <laughs> but. Uh, but so there's, there was a lot of that. I want to come back to that B team and one particular member that really frustrated me. But before that, I will say the strength of this show, you saw it in a lot of key scenes, but especially in the Chinese restaurant and in the warehouse with everyone interacting. But I, I felt like the, a lot of that, like great character interaction with everyone kind of discovering each other and have like butting heads against each other. That was great. Work. Yeah. Character, great character work. It was a lot like just the scenes you saw with with all the Avengers on the helicarrier in, in the first Avengers movie. Those were it was just those kind of great moments. They they had like maybe two moments that were sort of like the circling shot, like in the Battle of New York. Yeah, and they, and they were good. They weren't quite they as weren't awesome nearly as nearly as cool. Yeah, but I, I'll like that, I can cool. forgive that for the scale of what this is supposed to yeah. be. They they were totally the defenders. They actually make sense as the defenders here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was surprised Claire didn't die, and and that was and, and I'm happy they didn't ultimately. Yeah, I am too. Um, I was really expecting it because it started feeling like they were really painting really, it that way. Really, really foreshadowing like, that shit. She was going to like retire in three days type of, yeah. you know, moments. Too old for this shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I, 
great stuff with Colleen. Colleen, it, to me, was the best part of Iron Fist and a part that I genuinely enjoyed. So I'm excited to see more of her character in future stories. What What are sort of your thoughts of where they should go from here with this with with these you break different them characters. up you break them up and not give them all their individual stories back uh and have them cross paths with each other but, yeah but not in any major way at this point really no uh ah, see i'm craving more interaction not necessarily all four of them together because i'll tell you what one of the best surprise pairings from this this season was daredevil and jessica jones was an amazing uh, duo when they when the two of them were interacting yeah. whether they were sort of the cat and mouse game yeah. and then later on when they were investigating together yeah like, there were some great moments with the two of yeah them. I, you know I wouldn't mind like an episode or yeah. two per season where yes. you where you get a crossover well what do you think of the way they used Luke and Jessica's series like doing that yeah. kind of stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah where you, you get a couple episodes and this is where they are the end they're crossing paths hey I need you know hey Jessica I need you to track something down yeah. for me and you might get a fight with the two of them or together. you know hey Foggy I need something foggy hires jessica you know something like that um I, they run across each other but i don't need them in each other's stories specific i don't need a a team i don't need heroes for hire yet yeah I, you know, they, that hasn't been earned yet in yeah my that, mind. that hasn't been earned yet i agree i would like to see them head towards that sooner for sure with not with only with luke and uh danny though I am fine with Jessica Jones being her own series and Daredevil having his, their own series. I think those characters are rich enough on their own and are interesting and complex enough to sustain their own series long term. Yeah. I think for the same reasons, and as much as I love Luke Cage, I think you've got, like, he's still, like, Black Captain America. He's still a, he's a, he's a catalyst for the characters around him. More than he is a character who is necessarily evolving. Doing anything. Yeah, he, he already he kind of got past his... Like, he, they did what he, they needed to do for season one, and it was sort of him dealing with his past. Yeah. And thematically, they, they you know, they, they did that along with the villains and everything. So it was, it was a lot of characters dealing with, with, with those attachments and pain and, and past. So, I mean, of course, I'm sure there's cool things you could still do with him, but I only really want to see one more season of Iron Fist on his own with the new showrunner and Luke on his own. I kind of yeah. want them to, like, yeah, after that... Yeah, then it's that, time to bring them together. Yeah. I and, agree. And, and, but here's and what I alternate. don't want to see. Here's what I don't want to see, that yeah. they were painting the entire season is a love triangle between Luke Cage, Claire, and Jessica Jones. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want that. I know in the comic yeah. books, Luke and Jessica get together. And I don't need a, that to happen. Either. I don't need that to happen here. Yeah. I don't want that to happen here. Luke and Claire can stay together forever. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. ship that shit and be done with it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to put a ring on it <laughs> and then let's just, let's just be done with it. All right. Cause I, I don't, I don't want the arrow. Yeah. I don't want this to turn into the WB. I didn't feel, though, it got anywhere close to that, though. Oh, I did. Really? There was a couple scenes where, like, they're talking about, like, oh, hey, I guess it was good to see you. Yeah, how come you didn't call? Well, I guess I didn't call either. You know, that kind of – and I yeah. was just like, oh, you know what? I, I don't I don't need that. But I thought a lot of it was uh, – unlike Arrow, which is usually – like, it's just for the sake of the love triangle and all those CW shows. Like, it, to me, it felt like it was a significant part of Jessica's character and – Luke's in terms of how they deal with with their past and with their traumas and also the good things because there was a lot of Jessica needing to move on with her life yeah in this series and to me the big surprise was how amazing Jessica was in this series honestly she was the standout character she's in, my in spirit the, guide yes yeah, absolutely she was <laughs> but she was the standout defender in this particular season because yeah. she was the most interesting character had some of like some very rich but understated character development um and and as much as iron fist story drove the plot i think she did a lot and and both iron fist and daredevil drove the plot personally i think jessica's really gave a lot of the humanity yeah a lot of the humanity and helped ground that and make it make it as relatable as possible so and still having a, 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 a significant character arc of her own, too. Yeah, for sure. I, I Overall, I, I think it's... Uh, well, before I get to... You know what I really loved about this this whole season? Yeah. Was the costuming. Yeah. The costuming was amazing. 
it was amazing. Like the clothes that Electra was wearing. Oh yeah. The clothes that uh, Alexandra was wearing. Uh, like it just everybody's like out. It was just incredible. Like it just looked so good. <laughs> it looked so good. Like. That's like I remember watching it and thinking like, wow, this is like they've put some like a lot of times it's kind of forgettable. Like you're just like, oh, OK, whatever. Uh, you know, they're doing, uh, you know, yeah, she's wearing a sword or whatever. Uh, but they went beyond that. Like it, like the detail in the clothing was really, really good. It told you a lot about the character. Yeah. Every uh, single character. Every Even single character. Yeah, characters. for sure. Everybody was really good. Uh, and you know what I didn't notice this time? which I think is maybe the first time in this Netflix series, this whole thing it was like the really like comic booky lighting where it's like yellow and green lighting and stuff like that. Oh, I noticed that so much, but I enjoyed it. Oh, I didn't even notice it this time. Oh my God. I was, I loved it. That was one of my, another, one of my favorite things, the music yeah. and the lighting was very interesting. Cause like you have very different color palettes for each of every these single series. one of them you know yeah. it's definitely red and yellows uh, red, a lot of reds for daredevil yeah. a lot of yellows for luke cage blues and purples for jessica jones and definitely a lot of greens and yellows for iron fist and even in the the chinese restaurant where they were in the same location you would see the different color shifts for each of them but it still worked it didn't feel like a different place they lit that they lit that that place so brilliantly to reflect each character Perfectly. Hmm. I gotta go back and, and look at that scene again because I don't remember. I don't even remember even noticing it. It was so good. Oh, it was. It was. That, really... That's when lighting is good when you don't yeah. notice it, and that's been kind of my criticism of the lighting up to this point, where you're just like, okay, that's a little heavy-handed with the lighting, guys. Like, <laughs> to be fair, we it. watched almost half of uh, Daredevil season two with the darkness all the way all down. the way down. That's so... fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> we were like, man, we can hardly see anything. They're what really the going with this whole darkness this mode. Really, for Daredevil. really dark. Yeah. <laughs> That was my bad. Sorry. <laughs> it was your kid's bad, actually. Oh, those stupid kids. I need better kids. I got to raise them better than that. Um, and yeah. You, but you're right. But the, the music. You oh. would hear You would hear it as they entered, and it would change, but it was so seamless. It was, I, yeah. It was nice. Yeah, like, as you're reintroducing yourself to each character and where they're at, the music corresponded with, like, with, and it was like, oh, I'm right back into that season. But even. And then as time went on, like, it all scenes, blended It together. would blend in perfectly, yeah, too. Yeah. Like it was when, good. Yeah, like, I mean, again, like, I'm always going to come back to the episode three uh, fight scene, but, like, you know, you had sort of the sort of the Iron Fist soundtrack while he was in the in the boardroom fighting, and then as soon as, like, Luke busts down that door, you have Run the Jewels start play, it starts playing. It was, I mean, yeah. It was good. It was I, good. I was totally psyched. Uh, come back to a criticism, since we, we've given some, some good. No, we can't end on criticism, or we can't end on praise. We'll, we'll, we'll end up, we'll end on praise. We'll come back, we'll come back around to praise. In, in a little bit. All right, what um, else do you got? Karen Page. Oh, God really, damn it. She really annoyed me this series. And you know I'm right on this one, too. No, you're absolutely right. I've never liked her. <laughs> no, she was great in season one. Nah. She was, she, was really, she was actually a bright spot for season one. When she killed Wesley? Yeah. That was a great moment in the series. Yeah. Uh, especially, like, they've sort of hinted at, like, darker stuff with her and her nah. willingness to kill. Which really annoyed me with this whole... So, you know, Daredevil season two... Spoilers if you haven't seen it. I don't know why you're watching Defenders if you haven't seen Daredevil. But uh, see, see, it ends. The, the final moment is Matt showing Karen the, the costume and, and basically revealing he's Daredevil. And, like, we've kind of picked up at a place where he is no longer Daredevil. And she's like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy for you. Both Foggy and her are happy for him that he's not putting on the suit anymore and not really, you know, going out and fighting, even though he misses it. And he's not willing to really explain that, say that. But they're like, they're they're really heavy handed on this whole like, you, this is this is screwed if you're up. Be Daredevil, you can't be our friend anymore. Yeah, like they're really playing that card, yeah. really heavy, which doesn't make sense for the character. For one, Karen is a huge fan of Daredevil. In both season one and two, there's never a point where she was like, yeah, I have my doubts about Daredevil. Not just that, she's supporting the Punisher in season two. He's like, a supportable guy. I mean, like, she's all she's going on the whole, like, oh, he's a misunderstood guy. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been saying all along. She gets it. She gets it. That girl right well, there. Well, she's going to be – She we, we know she's going to be in, in – 
in Punisher, in Punisher season three, one. Yeah, too, yeah. Like, and I don't think he's going to be like, no, you can't live this life, Stop, Punisher. Stop, Punisher. <laughs> don't kill people. <laughs> don't punish the wicked. <laughs> Yeah, who knows what they're going to do with her because she's all over the damn map morality-wise. Yeah. I, it after would, this that, season. That, that really annoyed me, like her whole preachiness. I kind of would have – I kind of wanted that more foggy. out of Claire or Foggy, yeah. Yeah, that it make, that makes sense for Foggy. It doesn't make any sense for Claire. Yeah, but, you know, she took over for Ben Yurk, so. Yeah, that didn't make a whole lot of sense either, so. Fuck yeah. Netflix for that. So, so big high, highlight moments. What were, what were your favorites? Um, Madam Gao. Yes. Was a badass. Yes. Was a badass. When she unleashes, it's pretty awesome. She's like evil Yoda. She's like evil Yoda. Like force powers, just yeah. like pushing stuff all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know what? That that is exactly what I was gonna go for as yeah, well. Madam Gal was 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 amazing. I'm glad she's most likely, definitely alive. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so because I love her. Yeah, I love her. I thought Alexandra was great. Uh, I don't think she was quite to the level of a Kilgrave or Kingpin. No, um, but it was interesting to see her as one of the fingers of the hand and tell that story of the hand yes. and see how she manipulated everybody and how they all interacted with each other. I thought she was actually really really good yeah so one thing i mentioned to you especially after we finished the series is like i kind of like obviously i definitely wish they they skipped season one of of iron fist yeah but if they added like four episodes to this season and introduced iron fist in the defenders yeah do you think it would have worked or do you think there was too much they had to establish (sighs) well then you don't get colleen wing yeah, you can't do the 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 conflicted Colleen Wing. You can't no. do where she's a member of the Hand who turns. Yeah. So there's some of you that get, You don't get the Bakudo story. Yeah, it's not quite as nuanced as no. you can. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of needed. They just needed to do a better job on Iron Fist, frankly. Yeah. But I don't think you could have skipped it completely. Yeah. And it's that was sort of my same thought also with Elektra. I, not that they did a bad job, but I wish they had done more with her before she died. Yeah, I agree. You know, I would have liked to have had more time with her. Yeah, but. Either, either way, she was still amazing. I love Elodie Young as as Electra. She is like she mesmerizing. Yeah, absolutely. Like Every that sort she's of on screen, I can't intoxicating. Look like oh. that chemistry with her and and Charlie her Cox me. is perfect. Yeah. I, w- I would become a ninja for her. <laughs> I would do a sit up or something. Uh, I don't think for I her. Would, would you a sit up for sure? <laughs> I'm sending this clip to Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny would like it. She was like, go ahead, fatty. Go ahead. See if you can do a sit-up for her. <laughs> See what happens then, tubby. Throw out your back. <laughs> <laughs> he burns. <laughs> <laughs> See where that gets me. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, on that note, uh, let us know what you think about Defenders. What do you think about the ending? What do you think about Karen? What do you think about... Um, was Iron Fist sort of redeemed through the series? Uh, are w- what do you want for the future of these characters? And uh, like, who else do you want in sort of the Marvel Netflix universe? Let us know. You can contact us through all a variety of social media. All of that is on our website, certainpov.com. You can also subscribe to us iTunes, Google Play, or through your own podcast app. All of that again is at certainpov.com. And until next week, stay scruffy. Right Thanks for listening to Certain Point of View. Don't miss an episode. Just subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Head over to certainpov.com.